Hi Creative Humans and welcome to a new video of the VJE Tools series. Today we're gonna see a component that I found myself often using and this one is pretty self-explaining, is the random numbers extractor. It has really simple functions on the automatic mode, let's say, we can just set up the range for our random number to be extracted in, the frequency, and then we can just choose if we want the numbers to be floats or we want them integer and in that case if we want them rounded on the ceiling, on the floor or just round. Otherwise the second mode we can use it is like not the auto mode but the trigger mode. We can manually trigger it, otherwise this parameter can be obviously linked to something else, to another component and that would be probably most of the cases something audio reactive. But just to show you really quickly how it works, let's put down an LFO and just link it to the trigger and so you can see that each time the LFO goes from 0 to 1 we trigger the random number extractor to extract one new number and this is pretty convenient mostly in audio reactive setup so let's recreate it from zero the core of it is obviously to start with a noise chop okay and for this noise i want it to be random and then in the channel i want to turn these to not seconds but samples and just put zero and zero so we just have one sample at the time now we have some random numbers that is steady there and we can control it and now we are gonna control it obviously by the seed so we need to change this seed so i would start for now just putting down an lfo that is gonna play our automatic like mode so this is uh, what is like triggering our automatic mode is just a, an lfo and this frequency is that the one that we are gonna directly link in the parameters page so I want to have a count after that. So this is what we are using for incrementing our seed directly, it's just a count parameter. So for good practice, for once that we are not constrained in the 10 nodes challenge, that is my usual type of videos, we are, oops, we are gonna put a null and link it directly with the seed. So we are already just having the, the core method, we are extracting random numbers with a frequency and this is the core thing. We will just add a few things for make it more usable. Oh, first of all, I'm gonna collapse all of these. Okay, and dive into it, so then we can set custom parameters for the component. Okay, and now I'm gonna add a math here after the noise that is actually a random right now, because we want to define the range that we are extracting the numbers from. So I know that this noise, since the offset is zero and the amplitude is one it means that we are moving like with an amplitude of one from the center point that is the offset so we can move like one positive and one negative so this is our starting range and in the math i want to set it down here so this is the from range that we are starting from and this two range is the one that we are gonna link in the custom parameters so let's start doing it already I'm gonna customize the component. We still don't have the auto and the trigger mode. We are gonna come to it in a second. I want for sure link my frequency. So I'm just gonna click the frequency, keep it clicked and drag it to the <coughs> component editor, bin par as master. Okay, so this means that actually, if I open my parameters, these are, are linked both ways, so I can change it here and it's gonna change into the component and if I change it here, it's gonna change outside. And also, we want to link this range, so dragging it here as a master. So we have the same thing and probably I'm gonna change this page to custom instead of LFO. Okay, and the first part is set up. And from here, we can just set the out so we can access this number also from here. So the base is set, we just want now to have the fancy switch to the trigger mode. So we need an actual switch, so we can change from that. And here I'm just gonna put a simple constant and link it to the switch. Like I prefer it to have all the same name, so I'm gonna call both of those trigger and now this is angry at me so I'm gonna 
rename it. Okay, that's fine. So, and this is the actual network and all the magic is done in the customized component because right now we want a noto parameter and we want it to be a toggle. So we add this parameter and it's gonna be the first one. And I'm gonna also add the actual parameters and I'm gonna link this one here to the index of the switch and I'm gonna bind it. So when it's off, so it's actually zero. It's off, so it's zero. We are on the index one, so we are using actually the constant that is gonna be our trigger. We are choosing this parameter and when you set the auto to on, its value is actually one. So we are choosing the LFO. So this is already working. And then we also want to add a trigger. And I want it to be a pulse. So I'm adding the parameter here. And once we have this trigger parameter that is a pulse, we are gonna activate the constant, not activate, sorry, just select the constant trigger and link this here as bind. So each time we press the trigger pulse, I can't actually show you, but you can see it. It triggers, so it switch for a, like a fraction of second it to one. If we are also on off, so we are using the trigger mode, this trigger is gonna pass to the count and be counted. Okay, that's almost it. The last thing I need and want to do is having this integer option linked into my component. So we linked again as a master. So we can now choose how to pass from floor to ceiling to round and what type of number actually extract. And this is it. It's pretty easy to set up, but I found myself using it a lot of times. And I'm gonna show you right now really quickly, not the actual network development, but the two main applications. I use this type of component most of the time. And so you can maybe get inspired by it. Okay, change of screen. And here is a simple, really simple setup. This kind of, I would say like decorative, like adding layers for, for VJing. It's really simple. It's actually just a dot instanced, instanced in a grid and it's twisted, guess what? With a looping on timeline, the previous component we did. So we have this little grid that gets twisted and turns into a, some kind of DNA, DNA shape, I guess. Super simple, just constant, render as it is. And here I have a couple of variations. So this is just a fit to get it vertically. And these are actually the next component that I want to show you. So let me know if you are interested because this was the plan. And there are some component to create really easily like kaleidoscope effect. And here I have a switch where I link the original one, so the horizontal one, and then the vertical and the two other variations, so just the cross one and the more kaleidoscopic, I guess. And in this switch, I have my random number set from zero to three, and I just randomly switch between of those just to add some layers of complexity to the visual. Sometimes I want to add this type of really simple geometric elements. And this was one example. And so this thing, like random switching between variations of the same geom geometry, is something I would use this little guy uh, a lot for. And the other option I often use it for, change of screen, is this kind of use, and I'm gonna stop it for a second because I, it's it's really flashy, I would say, and turn off the background. And is actually changing the actual parameters. Like here, I just have again a simple rectangle instanced in a grid. Again, this time we are not even changing the grid or twisting and turning or, and nothing. And so we have this grid, and I have two parameters that are the. The size is fixed, while I have the rows and columns number linked to a random number extractor. So I turn it quickly to wireframe. So we are actually changing the numbers of instances with a random extraction. And at the same time, we are changing the size of the rectangle that we are instancing. And this is the result that we get. We have this, and I also have, sorry, also again, a random number extractor that controls a noise seed it's like an inception of noisy seed being controlled by randoms. And this triggers the colors of this grid. So we have some white and <coughs> black and white 
rectangle is happening. This is it. I'm gonna just reopen it. And these are just on automatic right now, but I would link those to a to an audio analysis or some kind of audio reactivity to have those triggered on the right music bit. And if you are interested in any of these networks, they are really simple, but if you want me to show you any of these, I'm more than happy to dive a little bit deeper in any of these. Thanks you for watching. Until next time, stay creative. Bye.